G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're gonna to be having a look at the plane with the identity crisis. This is the MiG-27M, and the MiG-27M currently sits in the bomber line and is an attacker with a fighter spawn. This, this is just the best Gaijin logic you can ever get. But you know what, that's okay, because it is a very, very fun plane to fly. But you know what else is very, very fun? The fact that I now have a decal in-game. I know, you know that you've basically made it when you've got yourself an in-game decal, and I think it looks great. So if you guys want to get this decal and uh, support the channel in a way, you can basically buy anything off the Gaijin store, even the $1.150 GE pack, and you're using the affiliate link in the description below and you'll actually get the little decal. You may have to restart your game for it, but you will get your hands on it and you'll also be supporting the channel. If you want to purchase things that are a little bit bigger, like a more expensive premium, you can get a small discount at the same time as helping me out. Uh, and if you want to do that, then you're more than welcome to and that also supports the channel. Uh, on top of that, I've also got merch with the same design, so if you want to wear my decal, you are more than welcome to. That is in the link in the description below, and I also have a promo code which will be appearing on screen as well. That lasts until the 31st of October, spooky day. So, speaking of spooky, we have the Identity Crisis MiG-27 with R-60Ms. This is one of, uh, I think, two planes to come to the game with all aspect IR missiles, and uh, it's pretty incredible actually. Having four of these gives you a fairly large advantage in certain situations, but you have to remember at the same time it does come with a little bit of a cost. Your plane doesn't have radar. It has plenty of flares. Actually, it's probably the most competitive in terms of uh, flare count in the Russian tech tree. It's pretty much on par now with uh, a lot of other 11.0s that are sort of around the battle rating. It's got sort of a number of flares in between the Vigan and the Phantoms. So. It's got plenty of options when it comes to dogfighting. It's got dogfighting missiles, if you will. I would consider uh, AAMs that have IR heat, uh, heat seekers, uh, I would consider them a dogfighting missile. And it, we have four of them, and we've got a pretty good set of flares to go with it. We've also got fairly good uh, turning capabilities, and we're not really going to be using that. We'll be using the head-on capability of the missiles here against an unsuspecting FG-1 there, getting the first strike, and uh, no pulse doppler moment for you, my kind sir. So... First one down. We're just going to be sort of on the outskirts here looking for an opponent to snag. This plane is based off the MiG-23 and you might think MiG-27 uh, it seems like a bit of an advancement. You know, why didn't they add the MiG-25? And that's because the MiG-27 is an offshoot of the MiG-23. Now, notice that that R60 missed and the J35 didn't put in a lot of Gs to sort of counter that. They just change the direction a little bit. And you can do that to negate the effect of the R60M in a head-on. It is actually quite effective. So you do have to consider that sort of thing when you are firing at someone in a head-on. You have to go for someone who's relatively slow. Now that the Draken has decided to turn, he is very, very easy pickings. And so that leaves me with the F1 to deal with. I'm going to go into a vertical here. And I've noticed the JA37 there in the periphery. And he is making waves towards me. So I'm going to prep an R60 early. Make sure I have enough distance to launch it towards him. But he gets taken out by an SU-17 in the meantime. Allowing me, once again, to turn my attention to the F1. Who I've been easily beating in a turn fight by manually sweeping the wings to zero. This is the best part of this plane. It has that dual functionality, and of course the flares coming in mighty handy over here with a couple of missiles barely avoiding me. So continuing the vertical turn fight, when you've got peers around you, when you've got some, uh, some teammates that are actually going for these people that are uh, going for you, it really does make it very, very easy. I've got the uh, J35 Draken in my sights here, who is very, very close. And the R60M just needs to be spooling up, and unfortunately, it's just not quick enough. But it allows me to get this missile here towards the JA37, who sees me coming. And uh, you'll have a look at that. The flares are still very, very effective against the R60M. So if you have five flares, you could probably easily beat that with a little bit of turning. And with a little bit of turning, the F1 has basically landed himself in front of my guns. You have a beautiful Burt 30 mil. Finally, some good guns on the Russian planes. And of course, that is beautiful stuff to see. Uh, yeah, a bit of a suicide head on there from me, but uh, I, got, I got a bit caught out. So I thought I might as well go for that one. 
And that pretty much leaves me with a bunch of kills, which is really, really nice. This plane is highly capable in situations where you have a lot of friendlies around and a low-speed dogfight ensues. It's just very, very nice to, to fly. Now, speaking of other suicide head-on, this FGR2 uh, comes in way too close for me. I should have uh, moved out of the way. And that is one of the things that you really need to look out for. You can't be committing to head-ons and you can't be waiting for that missile to prep I have died so many times waiting for a missile or waiting for something to uh, come in within range and ended up dying because I've just missed it. Simply because I've waited for an extra half a second and with two planes traveling at 1300 kilometers per hour it is super easy to make up 1500 meters and by the time you realized it you're basically within gun range and have your wings sawn off by some 30 mils. So definitely definitely be very very careful with these sorts of things these engagements are starting to get more and more long range uh, and the missiles at this point are sort of more or less struggling to keep up I, I would say that they're struggling to keep up now what never struggles to keep up are guns and guns are plenty on this plane that is an ace with uh, two gun kills there and three missile kills one missile being a little bit too ambitious, but that's the kind of thing that you have to realize in, the, in this plane. It is not going to be foolproof. Someone with flares, someone who knows what they're doing, is going to have a much easier time fighting you than, uh, say, something without flares. So perhaps it's wiser to pick targets that are either distracted or don't have flares to start off your engagements, or alternatively try and pick out those planes that are going a little bit slower with the guns. So. Here I am again with another match where out here on the periphery once more and it looks like we're going to be going for the F-104. Now I don't think the F-104 is paying a bit of attention and it is a very very easy target but he's turning away, he's realized that I'm here and the F-5 is the next target to go to. I'm going to wait for that three kilometer sort of uh, maybe two and a half kilometer range especially when he's flying away from me. Uh, I don't really want him to notice that I'm here as well and I do get spotted here by an F-4. 4C. The F4C gets promptly removed from the match and uh, it's now down to this F5 which also gets promptly removed from the match. So it's time now to scan around the area and have a look for some suitable targets. Now I'm uh, not really seeing any around me until something pops up above me from uh, that missile there. I'm just looking for where it came from and I can see it there F8U2. This guy doesn't have flares and he's also a fairly easy target. In a more or less full up tier, it is going to be a bit of a struggle. And of course, traveling at such a low speed and turning like that in a single direction is going to get yourself killed by any R60. Whether that be the R60M, the R60, or even an M9J in some circumstances. So, I'm going to be heading towards that furball that I saw earlier. Uh, hopefully can pick up a few kills. I probably should have prepped a uh, big fat R60 here. And the F8E here is looking to be the juicy target because he's rapidly closing in compared to all the other targets until I spot the F4EJ. The F4EJ going for that missile head on. The missile does not ring true because the enemy uses flares. And that is pretty much the end of it for anyone with an R60. All you do is use flares and uh, you'll pretty much win almost every single time against an R60 unless you are in uh, certain circumstances. The F8E pretty much had no chance there. So uh, that was pretty much a free kill, and the only reason why I fight a missile is because I had three or four enemies pretty much getting ready to chase me. So uh, I'm going to roll around now and try and engage them. I have to prep another R60M, and hopefully, fingers crossed, I can take out this F8E here. And uh, I've lost him, and there he is, flying underneath me. Thank you, spotting system, for ruining my day. Either way, the F104 can get that R60 anyway, and the F104 there doesn't realize what's coming to hit him until he's paid the repair cost. And the JA37 is pulling just too many Gs for me to get onto. This plane is one of those planes that you can 1v1 with, but if you are in a situation like this, you kind of need to keep your speed. You can't really just dump your speed and uh, hope that you come out on top. So... F8E here is also looking again for a little bit more fun, and I'm now out of missiles. I have to go guns, 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 and uh, that's kind of what I want to do here. Get into a nice low-speed dogfight once the numbers are a little bit thinned out. The F8E goes underneath. I'm going to go for a quick boot, and unfortunately no dice, and so I continue in a straight line until I realize that the uh, Vigan is pretty much on my tail, and I'm forced into a bit of a dogfight here. Now, you can keep up with the Vigan for a few turns, but 
you will eventually lose out to a plane like this and so you practically require a teammate as a prerequisite uh, unfortunately there is no two ways about it you just cannot outturn some planes despite having straight, wi straight wings and uh, the Yaktvigan is one of those types of planes now you have noticed here that I have dropped a little bit of speed and I need to sort of get out of there a little bit. I, I'm going to be missile food otherwise or someone is going to pick up my uh, my scent. Now speaking of picking up the scent, that is probably a Matra Magic so I need to make sure that I do not end up as the victim for that. I even switched off my afterburner for that. Uh, that's something that I'm starting to get in the habit of doing and it is actually paying dividends. Speaking of paying dividends, straight wings. Here we go against the Crusader here. I've, because I've switched off the afterburner, I am bleeding a bit more speed and I am just able to switch in behind and go for the reversal kill. That is one of the most satisfying kills I've had in a very long time. But as you can see by the fuel gauge, I'm low on fuel and I'm also low on speed, which is also extremely important. This is going to be a very tough battle. So what I'm going to do here is uh, not quite give up, but kind of give up here. I'm going to see if I can have one last hurrah and try and take out either one of these phantoms or the Vigan on the way down. Fingers crossed that I can get at least one of them. This phantom is not having any of it and the other phantom here is going to be swinging onto my tail very very soon and so I need to do something with the Vigan coming in as well. So I make my last ditch effort here against this phantom who is going to head straight towards me. I'm fully expecting a pulse doppler moment. I spray a fair bit and the brute does land. So I managed to scrape my ace that way. It's not it's not a very good ace. It's a little bit of a scrappy ace, but with that reversal, I'm sure it'll make up a little bit for the uh, for the trouble here. Now, unfortunately, my friends have uh, all all died or abandoned me, and uh, there's not really much I can do. I'm low on fuel. I chose to stick into the battle and I almost crashed my plane into the houses there. So I'm just going to go for, like I said, one last ditch hurrah and it doesn't work. There was no way I was going to get back to base. And so that is the end of that. This plane does require a fair amount of care on the afterburner and does not quite have the range of some of the other jets. You might notice that you might have to start taking 30 minutes of fuel and even being a little bit on the conservative side with that fuel. That's just the way that this plane works and to be honest, I haven't mentioned really, I mentioned once at the beginning of the video, but this plane is a ground attacker. It's not even a fighter and I've pulled two aces like that. That actually stands out to me as a very, very strong plane. It's, it's an attacker and it's getting four or five kills a match. I'm having an absolute blast with this plane because of that. It is just one of those planes that is extremely capable. It's like the SU-17 when it was first released. Uh, definitely very, very capable. And of course, there's no real like, oh, you're getting into a down tier time to club because you are also being reined in by those other types of planes. Uh, the EJ and the Vigan and all of those other planes that can outdo you in some way have uh, fairly significant advantages, but there's always a way to sort of sneak in and at least do something which is what I really like about this plane. It is essentially just a lighter MiG-23 minus the radar plus a better gun and minus two missiles, but really, who cares? I am very, very happy with this plane. Uh, and the fact that it gets more flares than any other Russian plane that is not the MiG-21 SMT is absolutely fantastic. It is just such a great plane to fly when you have some flares because it gives you that extra option of uh, a little bit more, a little bit more get out of jail free. Not a lot more, but just enough to allow you to get out of a couple of situations where you might have otherwise not. It sort of equalizes that playing field, if you will. So speaking of playing field, the uh, sun is really, really enjoying my, uh, my heat seeker there. And the F5C almost takes me out because I'm just getting too distracted by that uh, seeker head. So you have to make sure that you do not get distracted by things like that. That is going to be a major pitfall in this plane. That and turn fighting other planes that you otherwise couldn't have dreamed of. So I'm basically not going to give that F5 another thought. I have to make sure that I stay fast and I can therefore play this plane as a missile bus and pick another fresh target. So next target here is going to be the J35D. I'm closing it extremely fast and because of this closure rate I'm just not able to get the missile on quick enough 
and so I'm going to switch to my next target whilst keeping a lot of speed. My next target seems to be here, the JA37, and it looks like to me that he is distracted on AI, which is very, very good for me. Maybe his stock, maybe that makes me a bad person for, for killing a guy, just, just, you know, grinding some modifications. But nevertheless, I do manage to get the kill on that guy, making it uh, a fairly satisfying kill number two, because the Draken, sorry, the, the Vigan, rather, is uh, actually quite strong in a situation where there's a low-speed dogfight. And in any situation where you're outnumbered, this plane is uh, not, I wouldn't say useless, but it certainly isn't easy, especially because most of the planes that might be fighting you, for example, F5C here in this case, or the JA-37, or the J-35D, or the Mirage 3C in certain circumstances, can all out dogfight you. So you have to be extremely careful. Now, the F5C here, unfortunately, does not burn up. These things have some insane durability, so I'm going to get mad and I'm likely going to waste another missile just because Angie. And uh, honestly, I don't really blame anyone for doing this because the F5 is sometimes quite frustrating to face. And honestly, I uh, don't blame anyone for getting a little bit angry or salty. Now, I'm not going not gonna to do anything in chat, but I am going to spend a little bit of brute here. I do overlead these a lot, which is very, very frustrating. I'm still learning these guns, but my god, they are a lot of fun. Now, we have one plane here who has gone back to base. I'm not going to play with that AA. I think it's extremely stupid if anyone tries to, um, although I do believe that if someone is abusing it, then it should just turn off. Uh, I have made a video on that before, and uh, maybe I'll put it in a little card up the top and I'll uh, make a mental note for it for you. But basically, I don't think anyone should be able to abuse the AA, but at the same time, I think the AA should be strong enough for people to go and rearm, repair, etc. And for that, I propose a timer. So you have a limited amount of time between getting between five kilometers of the airfield, which is where the effective range is, and uh, by, I suppose, having him switch out their missiles or, or reload or whatever, and uh, not being able to fire at all. Now the F5 here decides that, uh, you know, avoiding missiles is, is just not his thing. And so, you know what, I'm happy to pick up kill number four. Overall, the MiG-27 is a basket of fun. It is honestly just one of those planes that you can, you can just chill most of the time. You do have to face things with a Pulse Doppler radar. You do have to face the RB-71s and the uh, Sky Flashers, but you have tools to fight that. You have your notching, you have that RWR, and you have flares for those IR missiles. For me, this plane is extremely fun, and it is just a great plane to chill out in. And if you don't want to be doing that, you can always be using the air -to, -air, the air -to ground missiles, or the bombs, although if you're bombing in this plane, you're kind of missing out on the fun side. You have uh, a certain side of this plane that is just extremely enjoyable, and that is the the basic air to air stuff as as basic as that sounds it is probably the best bit about this plane for our 60ms as much brute as you can ever enjoy and uh swing wings which just make this plane so much fun well ladies and gentlemen after allowing my uh, good colleague there in the mig 21 mf absolute champion for getting that f5 um i let him let him have the kill i thought you know what Brother, you deserve it, and obviously, working as hard as you do in a plane like that, of course you do. So ladies and gentlemen, that'll just for today. I genuinely have had a lot of fun playing this plane, and I've done fairly well, I think. So let me know what you think about the plane in the comments below. And of course, do check out the decal, and do check out all of my other fun things. I am switching the water cooling very soon, and I'm super excited for that, and you guys have been funding that, so thank you so much. Check out the merch, check out everything, take care. And I'll catch you next time.